Oh, right now, I'm so sorry I'm late, madame, but let me open my defence straight away by saying that I've known this man for three years. He's an absolutely corking chap. George. Yes, sir. That's the clerk of court. Oh, right, yes. Sorry. We haven't started yet. Oh, I see. Good luck, Blackadder. Oh, thank you, darling. And what's your big job here today? Straightening chairs? No. In fact, I'm appealing at the prosecution. I wouldn't raise your hopes too much. You're guilty as hell. You haven't got a chance. Oh, thank you, darling. And I hope your mother dies in a freak yachting accident. Just doing my job, Blackadder. Obeying orders, as it were. Yes, well, I wouldn't raise your hopes too much, if I were you. Any reasonably impartial judge is bound to let me off. Well, absolutely. Who is the judge, by the way? <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> right, we can get this over and done with. We can have a spot of lunch. Right, the case council is now in session. The case council is of that of the Crown versus Captain Edmund Blackadder, the Flanders Pigeon Murderer. The case in question is that the Flanders Pigeon Murderer did deliberately, carelessly, and with beastliness of forethought, murder a lovely, innocent pigeon, and dissipate some orders as well. Is this true? Perfectly true, sir. I was there. Thanks, George. I'd like to call my first witness Captain Darling. You wish to call the examiner of the prosecution as a defence witness? Yes. Don't worry, sir. I got it all under control. You are Captain Darling. I am. Captain, putting aside the case in question in question, would you think of Captain Blackadder as the sort of person who would usually disobey orders? Yes, I would. Oh, you sure? Throw a bank on you saying no there. I am sure. In fact, I am pretty sure that Captain Blackadder has been annoying orders for some time now. In fact, I took the liberty of making some notes and times of the notes of all the times that Captain Blackadder has disobeyed orders. 9.08am, 10.23am, 10.24am, 11.15am, you missed one up there, 10.30am, 11.15... George! Oh, 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 yes, thank you, Captain. No further questions. Well done, George. You really had him on the ropes there. Don't worry, sir. I have a last, and I think you'll find decisive witness. Call Private Baldrick. Call Private Baldrick. Deny everything, Baldrick. You are Private Baldrick? No. But you are Captain Blackadder's Batman? No. Boom. Come on, Baldrick. We're more helpful. It's me. No, it isn't. Sir, I must protest. Quite right. We don't need your kind here, Private. Get out. Now, George, come up, please. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, gentlemen, you have heard the case and evidence of poor boy today, and I can tell you that Captain Blackadder is totally and utterly guilty. Of nothing more than trying to do his duty under difficult circumstances. Nonsense! He's a hound and a rotter and he's going to be shot! Now then, before we go on to questioning the deceased, I mean the defence, I think it's only fair that we hear the case of the prosecution. Captain Darling, if you please. Thank you, sir. This won't take long. I call my first witness, General Sir Anthony Cecil Hotman A. Melted. Oh, yes. Clever, clever! General, is it true that you owned a young, plump, speckly pigeon called Speckle Jim that you hand-reared from a chick? Yes! Yes, I did! And did Captain Blackadder shoot the fomented pigeon? Yes, he did! Can you see Captain Blackadder anywhere in this courtroom? That's him! That's him! That's the man! Ah! Right, that's it. Oh, I find this. Right, Captain Blackadder, I have absolutely no hesitation of saying that you are to be submitted from this place and that you are to be shot tomorrow at dawn. Boom. Do you have anything to say? Yes. Can I have an alarm call, please? 